Hi there. Uh, today we're going to have a look at um, uh, types of questions that come up fairly regularly at National 5 and higher level um, and these are effective openings and effective conclusions questions. Uh, this video is going to be in two parts. This first part is going to deal primarily with effective openings or effective introduction type questions and then there'll be a second part that will deal with conclusions. In both videos I'm going to offer some general advice and also show you some worked examples that will hopefully help you in tackling these questions for yourself. The first thing to say though is that these questions come up fairly regularly. Uh, so there's a good chance that you will have to tackle a question like this in your exam. I had a quick look at the SQA website, for example, and at the past papers that are available there for free, and noticed that in 2015, 2017, and 2018, there was either an effective an opening or an effective conclusion question asked. Um, in 2015, for example, it was an effective opening question that they were given, and 2017 and 2018, it was an effective conclusion question that they were given. But you know, in three of the last four years, a question like this has been asked. Uh, similarly, in, in, in higher, it comes up, these questions come up fairly regularly. In 2015, it was the conclusion that you were asked to consider. And in 2016, it was the opening or the introductory paragraph that you had to focus on. So what should you be looking for um, if you're looking, we'll tackle first of all these the effective introductions. What are the kinds of things that you should be looking out for? Now, th these things are, that I'm suggesting here are not going to be present in every introduction. Uh, in a sense, what I'm offering you here is a kind of, uh, a kind of likely um, kind of uh, suggestions that you know, there's a good chance an effective introduction would include one or more of the things that I'm going to talk about in, in, in this list. But, you know, there are no guarantees. You have to kind of read very carefully and, and, and you know, focus on the specific context of the introduction that you're looking at. But, but the first thing that, that tends to be the case with introductions is that that opening paragraph tends to introduce the key idea that is then elaborated and expanded upon um, across the rest of the passage. And in if you are able to identify what that key idea is, and crucially put it into your own words, and then explain that you know here it is introduced and across the rest of the passage it is considered in greater detail you can argue uh, for credit that that is why the introduction is effective <coughs> excuse me but another way of tackling this question is to think about not so much what the passage is saying but how it is being said and here what we're looking for are the techniques, often the sentence structure techniques, that have the effect of engaging the reader. Now, you'll have seen from um, the, the video on, on sentence structure that there are a, huge, a great many um, sentence structure patterns or techniques that you can learn. And, and you know, I, there's a link to my website where there's a handout that you can get um, that has all the different um, kind of structural techniques and sentence types that will co that can come up at, at National Five and higher level. And against many of these different patterns or techniques, you can see that the general effect is that they, they engage the reader in some way. Now, if the writer is using these techniques in their introductions, in order to engage the reader, in order to grab the reader's attention, then we can argue that this is what makes the introduction effective. So 
Look out for things like rhetorical questions. Are there rhetorical questions there? Because rhetorical questions make the reader think, that engages the reader, and therefore, right at the beginning of the passage, our attention is being grabbed and the introduction is effective. Are there short sentences or minor sentences? Because these have a dr dramatic effect, they're attention grabbing, sometimes they're useful for emphasising a key idea, particularly at the end of a paragraph or at the beginning of a paragraph. Is the paragraph itself, that introductory paragraph itself, is it a single sentence? Is it a kind of very short paragraph? That in itself um, emphasises the ideas in that paragraph. Um, sometimes introductory paragraphs you know, you make use of the second person. The writer will speak directly to the reader. And that, again, you can argue is a way of engaging us and hooking us in. And in that way, the opening is effective. Sometimes writers will use a colon to kind of create a, a dramatic pause in the sentence before delivering a key idea. And remember what we've said about introductions, very often they introduce us to the key idea of the passage, but actually this is another way in which structural techniques can be used to emphasize that and therefore make the introduction effective. Repetition also emphasizes the key idea, as you, you'll know from the sentence structure video. And again, is that being employed in order to highlight this idea and in that way make the introduction effective. Finally, uh, the, a writer, writers can use a slightly different tone in their introduction from the rest of the passage. So is there, is there a humorous tone in the opening paragraph that, that isn't there in the rest of the passage but it's used to just kind of grab your attention or sometimes maybe even a particularly angry tone or a passionate tone that's coming through. If you're unsure about tone then please look at the video in this playlist uh, that may help you uh, to get to grips with that but tone can be used again to have that effect of engaging the reader and in that way making the introduction effective. Perhaps the best thing to do is just to look at a few examples and you can see the sorts of things that crop up. So this is the introduction for a paragraph that is arguing for widening um, access to uh, fresh water in, in third world areas. So um, so look, I'll read, I'll read this introduction and, and see if you can spot any of these techniques that we've, we've, we've spoken about uh, being used to hook you in as the reader. Imagine you woke up this morning on a dirt floor. Lying beside you are your four sleeping siblings, but you don't want to wake them yet because you know they are sick and need to rest. But you must rise. You have a long walk ahead of you and it is best to make it before the sun is high and the day hot. You stifle a cough as you step out of your straw roundhouse and wonder if you too are getting sick. But you push the thought away knowing that even if you are, the eight mile walk must still be made as it must be made every morning to collect the one thing you need most of all, clean water. Okay, so the question is, how is this paragraph an effective opening to a passage arguing for clean water, uh, widening the access for clean water in the developing world? Well, there are lots of ways in which this is an effective opening, but here are two things that you could see. The first is this, I hope you notice that unusually, the writer is speaking directly to the reader by using the second person. That you pronoun is used throughout this passage, uh, this paragraph, sorry. And, and that has a way of engaging us directly. There's a kind of immediacy in that because the writer is speaking directly to us. That is engaging, that, that hooks us in that you know we feel that we're being spoken to and in that way uh, we can say that this is an effective uh, opening paragraph so here i've got 
you know, as you'll see in lots of my videos, I, I tend to encourage you to bullet your answers for clarity. So use of second person you, there's my technique and my quote for clarification, <coughs> excuse me. And my second, bu second bullet, my explanation engages the reader in the openings story by directly addressing them. So we're given this kind of story form uh, opening where we are asked to kind of enter into the world of somebody in the developing world who has doesn't have easy access to clean water. And the way that that is done effectively is through this you um, second person pronoun. Another point that you could make, for example, is that I hope you spotted in the last sentence of this paragraph, there is a colon being used. So most of all, colon clean water. And you'll know from the sentence structure video that a colon has the effect of creating a, a dramatic pause, which can emphasize what comes immediately after it. And here, what's being emphasized are the words clean water. Now, clean water is not just the key idea in this paragraph, it is going to be the key idea for the whole passage. And so to put it there in that emphatic way, just behind a, a, a colon, right at the end of that opening paragraph, emphasizes that key idea, uh, which is the key idea of the passage, and therefore, the paragraph is an effective opening. So there's my, my technique, my quote for clarification, and then my explanation creates a dramatic pause emphasizing the introduction of the passage's key idea. So at national five level, you'd be looking for four marks for this. <coughs> at higher level, just get two, because of course at higher level, you don't get a mark for um, identifying a technique or quoting the mark comes from the analysis, the comment that you're able to provide. Another example that might help you here, uh, this is from a, a passage about uh, looking after the oceans, about um, uh, overfishing and, and you know, problems with fish stocks and all that kind of thing. Um, again, look out and see if you can spot some of the, the techniques that are, that are used, that are kind of grabbing our attention. Plenty more fish in the sea. In a world plagued by overfishing, the old saying has never sounded so hollow. But what can be done to save our oceans? The answer, it turns out, is simple, but not easy. Eat less fish. Okay, so what techniques are being employed there that will grab our attention? Well, the first thing that you should notice is that there are four sentences in that fairly brief opening paragraph and two of them are questions. And questions has the effect of engaging the reader because they make us think. So again, here's my first bullet, here's my technique, my quote for clarification, opens with a rhetorical question, plenty more fish in the sea. This engages the reader immediately, calling into question the validity of a well-known expression. So we've all heard that expression, plenty more fish in the sea, but he's saying actually that that is quickly not being, you know, it's, it's quickly becoming untrue because of all the fish overfishing that's, that's happening. And my second point I'm making here is that this paragraph ends on a very short sentence, just three words, eat less fish. Now that, is what this passage is going to be all about. That is, that is a summary of the entire passage, the argument of the entire passage, eat less fish. And, and here, you know, as we know, it's, you know, very short sentences um, can give a kind of dramatic effect and it emphasizes uh, what's in that um, short sentence. And so here it's being used to introduce this key idea. So first bullet point, short sentence, eat less fish. Second bullet point emphasizes the central argument of the whole passage, especially so as it comes at the end of the opening paragraph. So hopefully you've seen that the sorts of things that you should be looking out for in an effective introduction or effective opening question um, this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but things for you to consider. In the second video, we'll look at the effective conclusion question.